Let's talk about common foods, common grocery items that have soy in it. I've seen some comments from my previous videos wanting to go a little bit more into depth of what we should not eat if you do have a soy allergy, which if you're new to this channel, hi, I have soy allergies and gluten and wheat and a few other things as well. But on top of actually sharing what foods to avoid, I will be sharing things that you can replace it with because I know it can be such a daunting topic, especially if this is a new allergy for you. I found out I was allergic to soy when I was 21 and I had a whole lifestyle change because you have no idea how many things have soy in them. So let's get started into today's video. But first, a couple things. Number one is you need to learn how to read ingredients on the foods that you wanna have, okay? It's probably gonna take you a lot longer, your first round of going to the grocery store. As soon as you start noticing which foods you can and shouldn't have with your allergy, it's going to be a lot easier. So three things that, three main soy ingredients that you need to look out for is number one, soy lecithin. It's gonna pop up a ton, trust me. Number two, soybean oil. Soybean oil, especially if it's fried, like certain chips will have that as well. And number three is soy protein, okay? If you're into protein shakes, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, a lot of them have soy in them, so just avoid that. And of course, the general soy, soy sauce, you need to be mindful of if they are in the ingredient list. Number two is don't always rely on the bolded part beneath the ingredient list that says contains wheat or contains soy. Don't always rely on that, you know, don't take the shortcut and just read the bold because I have done that a handful of times and some companies still don't put contain soy even though it has soy lecithin, soybean oil. So I think in their mind, maybe they're thinking, oh, this doesn't have soy sauce in it, so it's soy free. But again, it comes in different forms, soy lecithin, soy protein, blah, 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 blah. And the last thing is just remember it's a lifestyle. It's gonna be a very hard change, but I'll share as many tips as I can so that we can kind of ease into this new lifestyle together. All right, so let's get started with the general list of grocery items that in my experience, I have read that contain soy. Number one, chips. Certain chips, I believe Ruffles uses um, soybean oil or soy le lecithin in them, as well as um, those sun chips, the, the one with the garden salsa flavors. I have seen soy pop up on their stuff as well, so you need to be mindful of that. Certain tortilla chips, like I went to Sprouts the other day, and they had replaced sunflower oil with soybean oil. I had been buying them religiously and I didn't even read the ingredient list and they just switched it up last minute and unfortunately, like I just can't eat it. So again, read the ingredients. A few chip brands that I have been consuming lately are of course Cheetos. Cheetos, magnificent. Hot Cheetos, I love them so much. I usually just get the hot Cheetos or the puffs and I'm good to go. But I have heard that Mexican hot Cheetos, as in the ones that are made in Mexico that have like a little yellow film on the outside, do have soy in them. So again, back to basics, read the ingredients. Doritos is another one, the nacho flavor, the Cool Ranch flavors, those are good to go as well. Second thing on the list is most candies. I'm talking um, I can't even think of them because it's been such a long time since I've had them. Twix, Kit Kats, um, anything chocolate, heavily chocolate processed in the candy section is 100% going to have it. Three Musketeers, I think Snickers, Snickers is one of them. So unfortunately, all of these Halloween candies are more than likely going to have soy in them. But if you do like Skittles, I think Sour Skittles, I had them a while ago. Um, the fish, Swedish fish are also good. And Sour Patch Kids. So they're a little bit more of the soury ones, basically the ones that do not have chocolate, highly processed chocolate, because what you'll find in there is soy lecithin, which they use as an emulsifier. And I can talk about that in a separate video. Number three on the list, prepackaged goods. I'm talking cookies, I'm talking cake, I'm talking anything that is prepackaged and sold by the grocery stores are more than likely going to have soy in them. Even certain ones that have little chocolate chips, those will probably have soy in there as well. 
a great replacement. If you do have an Aldi's near you, I, I love Aldi's. There's a brand called Live G Free, something like that. And they have all of their stuff are free from all of the eight or nine big allergens. So nut free, soy free, gluten free, all of those things. And they have brownie mixes, pancake mixes, cake mixes that I have tried all of them and they are just as delicious. So there are options out there, but I think big brands kind of like Betty Crocker. I can't even think of other ones, but those ones will contain soy in them as well. Number four on the list, ice cream. Oh my God, this one broke my heart. I love ice cream so much, especially chocolate flavor. You'll notice that a lot of chocolate will have soy less than in them, but a lot of ice cream you need to read for soybean oil and soy lecithin because they will sneak that in there somehow, some way. Probably the best chocolate ice cream that I have had is the Tillamook chocolate ice cream. That one is just, oh, I'm craving it right now. It's so hot where I'm at, but it's absolutely delicious and I highly, highly recommend that as an ice cream brand if you are craving chocolates. There are other ones out there. There is a brand called So Delicious and it's dairy-free and most of their things are soy-free and gluten-free. So if you are allergic to gluten or wheat, I had a cookie dough flavor from there. There's just a lot of mix-ins that I thought I could never have again, but so Delicious does a really good job of offering these kinds of allergy-friendly alternatives for everybody that is like us, like you and me. Number five on the list, I've been talking about it a lot already, chocolate flavored anything, all right? Chocolate flavored anything is going to have soy lecithin in it for the most part. Chocolate cake, chocolate chips, chocolate bars, hot chocolate. Hot chocolate from Starbucks specifically do not have it if you have a soy allergy. Trust me, I've had it. I had brain fog and I do tend to break out in a little bit of a rash if I have something that I'm allergic to. And last December, I was drinking hot chocolate from Starbucks and definitely had a reaction. Looked it up online. The packets that they use have soy lecithin in them, which really sucked. I definitely had a little bit of a breakdown because I was like, I can't have anything. But again, read the ingredients. If you are going to have hot chocolate, read the ingredients. An alternative to that is the darker chocolate that you get as in 70%, 80%, 90% dark chocolate, the less likely you are going to have soy lecithin in them. I went to Sprouts, they do have really amazing options of things that only have four ingredients in them. Um, if you know what craft chocolate is, those more than likely are going to be very, very good. Craft chocolate is known for its quality and soy lecithin soybean oil is nowhere near used as an emulsifier for these craft chocolates. So there are options out there. The specific one that I have in mind is the Lint 90% dark chocolate. If you're not a fan of dark chocolate, I'm sorry to tell you, but you gotta, you gotta get on it, gotta get on it. I'm sure there are others that offer um, soy free alternatives, but I personally am a dark chocolate lover. So I don't mind eating 90% and having that little bit of bittery sweetness that comes along with it. Number six, prepackaged ramen. <laughs> I think this is widely known. I'll just combine these for you. Prepackaged ramen, tofu, edamame. Those common Asian foods, common Asian ingredients, you really need to be mindful of those as well because they 90% of the time will contain soy. Now, at, in terms of replacements, I know this isn't a direct replacement, but it's better than nothing. Pho. If Vietnamese pho soup, traditionally they do not use soy. And every pho restaurant that I go to and I ask, do you use soy in your broth? They say no. So if you like pho, you're all good, you're all set. And if you are gluten-free, pho is rice noodles. So you can enjoy that to your heart's content. When it comes to prepackaged ramen though, in terms of replacements specifically for ramen, I haven't found one that I liked. I tend to actually make the ramen myself. Um, I just use chicken bouillon. I can make a whole separate video on that, but I use chicken bouillon and um, rice noodles and it does the trick for me. Number seven on the list is dressings and sauces, all right? Salad dressings, um, random sauces that you might use to flavor your barbecue or whatever it is, you need to look out for soybean oil, okay? A lot of these companies are gonna be using soybean oil as their main base for an oil. 
and that is very annoying and unfortunate. So even when you go out to restaurants, um, I will say big chain restaurants are a lot better on being very knowledgeable about what goes into their foods because of the allergies. So if you're ordering salad from somewhere or wherever, you know, just be mindful that there may be a high likelihood that they use soybean oil in order to make their dressings or their sauces. Mayo is another one that uses soybean oil. Some sesame oils also use soybean oil in the mix, but there are some quality ones that just are 100% sesame oil. Mayo, I think they have a vegan mayo that just uses vegetable oil and it really is like soy free vegetable oil um, because some vegetable oils can contain soybean oil. It can get very, this can get a little bit complicated, but certain vegetable oils will just use a huge mix of every type of vegetable and sometimes they will just throw in soybean oil in there as well. So it's not always guaranteed that vegetable oil is free from soybean oil, but personally, all the vegetable oils that I have been consuming, I have not had a crazy reaction or any reaction at all, but that is just my case. If yours is a little bit worse than mine, I would say steer clear of it, find another alternative or one that specifically is soy free. Oyster sauce, chili oil, most Asian sauces, and of course soy sauces are going to be sauces that will or may contain soy in them. Having said all of those things, replacements that I use for soy sauce and all of these things include cocoa aminos. Cocoa aminos, I can do a whole video on that. Let me know down below if that interests you. But essentially it's coconut and there's no soy in it whatsoever. It's a little bit sweeter, not as salty as soy sauce and it does the perfect trick of replacing soy sauce for me. Mustard and ketchup, totally okay. Again, just read the ingredients, but for the most part, I have been okay with both mustard and ketchup. Sriracha and most hot sauces will be soy free, okay? Back to the basics, read the ingredients. One thing that you take away from this, read the ingredients. Lastly, I think this is number eight, protein shakes, all right? A lot of protein shakes are gonna contain something called soy protein isolate. It's in the name. If you see soy in the ingredient list, steer clear of it. There are certain brands that do not have soy in them. I think one of them is Garden of Life or Garden of Eden that I have used in the past before. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it is soy free and out of all the options that I have, it's better to have that than nothing. Protein bars will also have soy protein isolate in them or soy lecithin if they do have little bits of chocolate chips. Um, but a protein bar that I have been loving lately, absolutely loving, is Aloha. It's the Aloha brand. Every single flavor is gluten-free and soy-free. I personally have been eating the peanut butter bar. I think I have one, let me show you. This is the Aloha brand. No, this is not sponsored at all, but I literally went on Amazon because my mom and I were gonna go on a camping trip and I needed to know what protein bars I could have. This is the peanut butter chocolate chip plant-based. So it's also vegan for any of you that are vegan um, and soy-free, which can be very hard. Let me know if you are a soy-free vegan. That is something that I have not come across yet because so many vegan ingredients is soy-based. Anyways, Aloha bar, really great alternative for a traditional protein bar. That is my whole list. The general rule and something that I have found is anything that is made in a big factory is a big name like the Mars chocolate brand will contain some kind of soy in them because soy is one of those cheaper ingredients that businesses like to use and generally most things that are Asian. I'm Asian myself, I'm Filipino, so finding Sinigang mix, if you know what that is, has been really, really tough. If I missed anything else, let me know. Leave it in the comment section below. If you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and click the like button. Let me know down below as well. And I will see you all in the next video. Oh, really quick. If you're looking for gluten-free, soy-free recipes, more food-based videos about what you can make that is mindful of gluten and soy allergies, check out my boyfriend's channel because he does food related content and all of his recipes are gluten free and soy free it's keegan's cooking you can find him on instagram TikTok, and youtube as well he does he has the same allergies as me 
like what are the odds but he loves to cook he shares amazing food that he makes i have tried it before so i can bet to you that it is absolutely delicious but thanks again everybody for watching and i'll see you all in the next video bye